tonight on the Hawaiian Moving Company. We'll check out the hottest kids game in town. We'll meet one of the men involved with bringing this milk cap slapping phenomenon back to the islands. Plus, a 30-year pog popping veteran will take on some Hawaii Kai hotshots. Hi, and thanks for joining us for another Sunday Night Hawaiian Moving Company. Tonight from Hilton Lagoon, I'm Michael W. Perry, and we'll get right to it because we know we have a lot of questions to answer. Somehow, if you're a grade school parent, you know that the kids have gotten into something called pogs. It all began about 50 years ago as a game of skill and luck in the elementary schools, and for some reason, it's back. It involves the top of a milk bottle. Now, we know they don't make milk bottles anymore, but they make milk bottle caps. And that's what the kids call pogs. Three, 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 two, three, two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like the pogs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a fad that's taken 30 or 40 years to come full circle. And now, it's hotter than ever. Milk Caps, or Pogs, is a game played by just about every grade schooler in the state. All you need is a handful of these Milk Caps, a few friends, and a quick wrist. Everybody eddies up the same number. You shoot with your keeny or shooter, and any caps you turn over with the hit are yours. Oh, yeah. For these kids, it's a 90s version of Marbles. And it's just as fun and exciting as it was for sharp-eyed kids years ago. Whenever I flip it over, I feel really good and really great. And I just wish I could do it more times. This is fun because you get to keep them and you get to um, play with them. But when you lose them, you feel all sad and all. How's it going over here? Hey, guys. Hi. All right. Hi. You're playing pogs, huh? Yeah. All right. Hey, I'm Mr. Dan, and I make these things. Dan Cosina is one of the people responsible for the resurgence of milk caps. As a distributor for these little paper discs, he had a few thousand printed up last year for a small group of collectors, and ever since then, he's gotten hundreds of calls for his minimum order of 20,000 at a time. We started it last spring uh, with the Hawaii All Collector Show, and uh, now this thing's just taken off and blasted, and uh, everybody's playing it, and it's just uh, a great thing. Let me tell you a little about how we used to play. Dan's friend Bob Short is a self-proclaimed old-time milk cap king from the 50s. He and his schoolyard buddies used to play by the hour back at Wailei School. But back then, they used real milk bottle tops. Instead of buying them, you had to drink the milk before you could play. When I watch these kids, I really get excited. It brings back the memories of the old days. It brings back the memories of uh, fighting for your chips, uh, your, every milk cover you could possibly get in your pocket. It was a fun time. These covers that you have here, they're a little thinner and they stack real tight. Now, Bob will be the first to tell you much has changed with the game over the past 40 years. First of all, the milk caps have changed in design a bit. Where they used to have just the name of the dairy, now they can advertise anything from shopping malls to personal injury lawyers. But the game's integrity has still held up, and so has the strategy. The strategy is to hit them on the side if there's a big pile, but if there's a small pile, just hit them anywhere, as long as you hit it. I knew I was gonna come up here today, so I took home a few of those pogs from Dan and I practiced uh, for about an hour last night with my son, but still, I haven't got the eye like these kids, you know? You can't beat their eye. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a game that was strictly here in Hawaii, until lately. Now the milk cap craze is already spilling over to the mainland. It's a game that old kids can remember, but as Bob found out, it's best left up to the young ones to play. It's a phenomenon. 
There's only one company that's still making an authentic milk cap. It's in Canada, and boy, they're doing millions a month now. The kids used to call them Pogs because they were the first ones to really make it with the kids. P-O-G stands for Passion Orange Guava. Now the kids call them anything that's written on them, like Metal Golds, TNCs, or KSSKs. And they play all day.